Good morning, and uh, always, always a fun to be with this group and get going on uh, another game week, another opportunity uh, to play against Army and to be back home. And so it's uh, it was fun being with them here, and we've got a lot of work to do this week to make sure that we're prepared and ready for this weekend. Well, uh, what, what led to the decision to dismiss John for Irving program? Yeah, you know, I spoke with Jalen yesterday, and, and I'm going to keep that between uh, me and Jalen. Well, you have obviously a large cleanup drop room at the beginning of the season. The yep. numbers are down a little bit. Um, I was just questionable this week. Is there another guy in the mix who hasn't played yet, who, in your opinion, is close to helping you, whether it's this week, next week, or somewhere down the road? Because you say you're going to need everybody. Yeah, you're right, and, and certainly um, there has been, you know, there's three in that room that, that started in camp, and, and all three, uh, very different reasons, aren't, and, and yet uh, there are. You know, we've loved and appreciated the way Julius has approached it and, and what he's done on, on the scout team, and um, kind of with his opportunities when when we go against each other, and, and, and we're really excited about that, and, and then uh, I think, you know, Got some of the other freshmen. Jackson's been doing a good job, so you know, feel good about the backs that we have. And and uh, and you are right. I, you know, we don't know the future, but but uh, you want to have them all and, and and feel real confident with with the group. Well, now that you have lost three scholarship running backs, if, if we look at the future uh, of the program, does this impact what you want to do in, in recruiting? Is there a certain number that you'd like to have in that group, or how does? Losing three scholarship guys changed those plans. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it was um, you, you try to take you know advantage of this combination, right? You have certain positions you, you're going to have a minimum that you want to be at, and then you're going to have uh, if you feel good about you're going to you'll go over at some positions, and so you know not concerned kind of on the overall numbers, and you know we're. You know, every year we're going to take at least one, and then there's some years, and, and you don't know. You know, we've had a number of guys. You know, Alec Engel came, and, and was he a running back? Was he a linebacker? And, and, and so I think that, particularly that position in recruiting, you're going to get a lot of your best athletes are going to be at the running back spot, and so I feel like that's always a good group to have. Um, and, and where they end up, you don't quite know. Well, you, you consistently talk about finding guys who are the right fit, whether it's your coach or a player. Three different situations with these players, but in evaluating what's happened, it's it possible that they turn out to be not good fits for what you expect here. Yeah, I mean, I think when you when you go back and look at each each one, mm -hmm. um, I think it would be unfair to to say that. To be that definitive on it. Well, how did you tell the team about the decision to dismiss you? Uh, didn't, you know, they know and they were excited to play Army this week. We've got a big game coming up. Just wondering with Braylon, obviously you played a bunch of different positions coming in here. What made you all think running back was the place to start him out at? And secondly, with Jalen, were any of the when you did play earlier this season, were any of those discipline related with the first game you left? And yeah, excited. You know, Braylon's a heck of a football player, and I think you know good football players can play a lot of positions. And, and certainly Braylon, you know, even just the last year and a half, his his body changed, and, and I think you saw reasons why in the time that he's had that he can be a good back. And you see it, you know, you see him on special teams and, and what he's given to us, and, and so. And that's why we're excited about Braylon, and, and you know what, he's, I appreciate, you know, the fact that he, he wants to keep studying and keep learning it, and, and I think he's going to continue to grow with uh, the snaps that he gets, not just in games, but in practice. I've got an Army question for you. Um, Thank you. <laughs> what is the biggest challenge in trying to prepare for the style of offense that they run um, with your defense, which has had a lot of success right. against a bunch of different styles, but this would seem to be something pretty unique in college football. How do you prepare for that? Yeah, it, it is it is different than what we've seen. And, um, and you know, spend time this summer, defensive staff, and, and you know, I like the, the mindset that our group has. 
one, you, you got to recognize it and understand who they are and, and how they want to play and what they're doing. And, and they're really, they're, they're efficient. They execute it well. You know, they're well coached and, and players know it. And, and it's going to force you to play really good, sound assignment football. And um, that's the challenge. And, and that's the, you know, that's the opportunity that, that our defense has. And, and we've been playing well. And we are going to be tested differently. And I know we say that each week. And, and I think there is truth to that. But this certainly is uh, a, a different type of prep. And I think our guys are excited for that. You're recognizing that. Yeah. Is there any sort of challenge at all? I mean, you've just come off a big, important conference victory. You, then you jump in auto league again in the middle of your season against a team that your players probably don't have much knowledge of that program. Any challenges that you're facing as a coach this week? No, I mean, I think, you know, the challenge is facing a good Army team, right? And and the opportunity is we get a chance to play. And and I think that, you know, whether it's a conference game early or non-conference, I don't think that really matters to, to this group. You know, it's a chance. We know we're playing against a good football team, and because of that, need to have a great week of, of preparation. And it's a it's a group that enjoys and appreciates the, the opportunity to play. And so let's make sure that we do all we can and take advantage of that. But but certainly, you, know, you watch the film and you see it's a good football team. You know our guys are well aware of of you know all that goes into it and, and the type of person that's. A, you know, on that team and, and, and all they're doing. So I think it's a, it's one you quite honestly get excited for. Final filling out the, the non conference schedule can be a challenge at times. How did this Army matchup come to be with the, the first time these programs have met? I'm not sure. That's kind of an off the beaten path question. But I'm just wondering when you're deciding who's going to return kickoffs and punts, how your thought process evolved on deciding whether to maybe put one of your top playmakers back there or maybe a backup and uh, didn't know if the risk of injury or how did, how, did the, how your thought process evolved and how you go about making that decision? Yeah, I, I think that you, you, know, you certainly, number one thought is who can, who can help us do, uh, do the task at hand. And, and then, the, you know, there's, there's always going to be risk and involved and, and yet I know players want to play and, and guys want to be able to help the team in in any way that they can and so I think that you you, you first you got to say who can do the job well and then put them in there and and I think I think that's the starting point. Jay. Paul I know Cam Large only got maybe for a couple plays or so but how have you seen him progress to the point to where he's able to be put in those situations like at the goal line and just what stood out about his game so far? Yeah, I think that, you know, the, there's, a, there's a trust factor that goes in when you, when anyone earns the right to be on the field. And then that's why I think I, I use that phrase. You know, they've earned the right to be out there. And, and certainly, you know, the situations he was in, it's, you know, it's on the goal line. Those are big, kind of known big situations. You know, how do you finish a drive and, and uh, you know, just the way that he's kind of approaches each day. You know, he's got an energy about him, and and uh, thought it showed. You know, he's going to keep going. It wasn't pretty, but you know, he and Braylon kind of helped get that. You know, could have been a three ball on the three or four, and and, and you know, Braylon got it going, and he kind of kept pushing it. And, and how do you get it to the one? And now you, you got a chance to finish it. But um, you know, he's jump. He'll jump in and do anything for this team, and and. Uh, you know, kind of the way the situation presented itself, and, and we're glad we got him. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure how many snaps Brady Shipper ended up getting, but I know he picked up a couple first downs. Yeah. Just curious, what exactly does he give you that the coaching staff, whether you and your running backs coach side, we can trust him out there to see the right there? Yeah, I, I think what he gives is what you said at the end. Okay. You, that you, you, you trust him, and I thought that. You know, one of the things I thought Chip did a great job of this spring, and we didn't, uh, we didn't have a lot of guys going, and Chip really took advantage of that time, and kind of the consistency in the details, and I think that then gave you the fact, okay, we can we can trust him to do 
what needs to be done and he, he kind of took from the spring and carried that forward and I think that's where you, you see from our end of it there is a trust and and then certainly enough ability to not just know what you're doing but to do it well and be effective in it and and I thought he gave us some really important plays you know and, and it was uh, it was good to see for him but it was really important for our team to, to have him do that. Well, I imagine it can be challenging for any position coach who gets hired and has to coach a group of players that he didn't recruit and, and doesn't know and has to get to know them. Um, can you describe how you've seen Gary Brown handle that and, and what his coaching philosophy and style is with the players? Yeah, I think it's been it's been great. I know Gary's been energized, you know, to be back and, and certainly um, a little different than the last jobs that he's had. But I think with it comes an energy to it, and you know, I can speak. On my own, when you when you do get a chance to be around a, a group that um, that you haven't been with, that, that can be exciting. And I, I know that you know Gary's been energized by that. And um, you know, you think about it, his his whole career has been that. You know, or not whole, but a big chunk of his career is. You know, you might have one guy that you've coached, but there's there's change in that room all the time, especially at you know the NFL level. And, and so I think that it's, um, I know the kids are energized by it and, and he's energized by them and, and there's a lot to teach and, and go over and, and that part's been good. Paul, well, Saturday Chez talked about leading the running back room. How have you seen him do that since he got here in June? Yeah, I think that he's, um, I think when, one, he's been himself. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like he's trying to be someone that he's not. And then I think, what also in kind of being himself has been a positive is when a guy goes through and makes a decision that he made, my, not guess, but my gut tells me that, you know, there's a, another driven purpose behind it. And so someone with purposeful actions is good to follow and good to see. And I think, you know, the, he brings that. I think John Chanel has been really good for that room in a different way, right? It's a different position, but there's um, kind of a, you know, been around it and just different enough. And, and yet he, I think he shows an appreciation for him. There's great respect there. And, uh, but I think with getting back to Chez, I think it's um, kind of the way he approached it. And I thought that, you know, he did a great job of kind of, you know, the way he, he approached the last game you know, in, in, in every way, and it, it became infectious.